Hello my friends and Happy New Year 2024! You know, uh, today is January 1st here in Japan. We get to celebrate New Year's a little bit before the rest of you in North America and other parts of Europe. And uh, I came home today uh, after going out a little bit and I said, uh, you know, I just want to make a video and it's going to be a little bit different. I'm not going to focus on anything, on any vintage hardware in particular. I'm not going to do any zoom in shots and I don't, I don't even have my, uh, my black background that I, I actually left that at the office and I'm filming here at home today. I just said, you know what, I'm going to do a talking head video. I'm not going to do a lot of cuts and I'm going to get it out the same day, which is only possible if I uh, do a video of this sort. So I hope you don't mind, but I just wanted to thank you once again. Uh, for having supported my channel uh, so much in uh, 2023 and I uh, just wanted to talk to you about various things. Um, first of all, I'm not a, a full-time YouTuber. I'm just doing this uh, as an enthusiast like many of you are. I'm kind of passionate about Apple, so that's really the core of what my channel is about. However, it's very interesting. You, you might be surprised to know that uh, the videos that get the most views actually have nothing to do with Apple. Um, my, my number one video right now is about my capacitor video. It's, it's about just general recapping, uh, to how to choose capacitors for recapping. If you've not already seen that, you can check that out. But uh, by far, month on month over this past year, that has gotten the most views. And it doesn't really center on any particular computer, although I did give an example about an Apple SE30. But uh, that gets the most views and prior to creating that video, the video that got the most views uh, wasn't vintage computing. It was about my uh, 2009 iMac 27 inch, how I was able to bake uh, the video card back to life and I created seven or eight videos on that. I have a playlist, you can check that out. But uh, so prior to my recapping video, that was uh, the video that got the most views. But you know what? Uh, right after that is my HP calculator uh, videos. and. Uh, uh, those videos get a huge number of views. I mean, we're talking about uh, maybe 30,000 or more views on a particular video, whereas on my vintage Mac uh, videos, maybe if I'm lucky, I'll get 1,000, 1,500. Uh, some videos haven't even broken 1,000. So um, you might say, well, why don't I just focus on that? And, and the reason is, first of all, I'm not analytics driven. There are a lot of YouTube channels that are which means that they're going to look at the analytics and say, wow, this type of video is popular. I think I'm going to start focusing on that. And then the channel will lean towards that direction. But uh, I, I really can't do videos, uh, you know, every time I do a video about HP calculators or about uh, uh, capacitors. And even if I could, that's not really where my passion is. I love HP calculators. My start was in 1989 when I entered uh, college as an engineering student and I had a HP 28S RPN uh, calculator, reverse po Polish notation. And I actually did a video about my uh, HP calculator collection. Uh, and uh, so I have a, um, I'm a big fan, we'll just say, of, of HP calculators. Uh, and uh, they hold a very dear place to my heart. Also, uh, my friend Mark Josidis of Mac Effects sent me one on loan. Uh, it was an HP uh, 12C Platinum. Uh, calculator, financial calculator, and I sent it back to him after I did my review, but I basically reviewed that calculator, uh, talking about the Voyager series of HP calculators. And those videos get, I mean, a huge number of views, uh, completely different than my vintage Mac videos, even though my passion really lies in Apple products. And more recently, I've, uh, I, you know, my last video was about the Apple IIc, and I plan to do more about that. And by the way, uh, Mark Josidis also sent me, for those of you who are calculator enthusiasts, uh, he sent me this TI Inspire uh, CX CAS. Now, I am not a TI guy and I still have to <laughs> kind of, you know, he didn't give this to me. He just sent it over to say, well, whenever you have time, uh, you might want to do a video about this. So I think I'll do a video about it at some point once I figure out how to use it because it's, it's quite a bit different than you're, you know, it's not an RPN calculator, it's algebraic, and the way you use it is quite a bit different than HP calculators. But uh, TI has dominated the U.S. educational market for years. And uh, that's kind of because HP allowed them to do that. But back in the 80s, when, you know, when I got started with HP, HP was, uh, that's not to say TI didn't exist, but HP really dominated, was, was quite strong 
back then. But, you know, uh, there will be more calculator videos. So if what brought you to my channel originally was a calculator video, well, please know that I plan to do more about that. Um, also, you know, I do spend money that is donated to this channel on things that can contribute to this channel and uh, uh, really produce some more interesting content. One of the things that I did purchase, not necessarily to do a video, but I recently purchased an oscilloscope. And uh, this little guy here is a uh, Rigel DHO804. And I recently purchased this. And you might say, well, I'm, I'm uh, into vintage computing. Uh, do I really need to buy this? And, you know, today's video is not about this scope, but I'm just showing you one of the things that I purchased recently. Uh, no, the average person does not need an oscilloscope. Uh, you, what you do need, though, is, is a multimeter. And actually, I did a review on the uh, EEV Blog 121GW multimeter, and you might want to check out that video if you have not seen it already. And that video gets a lot more views, <laughs> by the way, than my vintage Apple uh, uh, content does. Uh, but uh, basically, I could, I might do a video on this at some point, but so many people have done a video about this unit already that, um, I don't know, I'm just trying to figure out what I should do about it because I really don't like to do a video that is just a clone of what somebody else has done. That's just not my thing, uh, even though I could do it my own way. Because some of these guys have just covered pretty much every feature of this thing. So what can I really add to that? And the reason I did my video on the 121GW um, multimeter is because there were a lot of things that other reviewers left out. Some very basic things that they should have added. And I said, you know what? I need to do a video on this. And so, again, you should check out the video on that because it's really quite comprehensive. But um, this is neat. This is from Rigel. It's a Chinese brand, but uh, they're, they're pretty good. And uh, they have been known for many years for coming out with some feature-packed uh, low-cost scopes. And really, that's what this is. Uh, you can get it for less than $400. I'll put a link in the text description for you. My video is not completely about this, but basically this is just one of them I bought. But they're also very hackable. Very hackable. Uh, which means that you can give it more features than, than it comes out of the box. And normally you have to pay for that. Now, some people don't like, you know, hacks. They say, oh, it's unethical, it's illegal and all that. But Rigel really doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter to them so much. They don't mind. They, they are aware of hacks, actually. And uh, it doesn't bother them because they know that some people are going to pay for the upgrades anyway because they don't want to go through the hassle of hacking the scope. And what was the hack? Well, all it is is a procedure that allows you to get more bandwidth. This is a 70 megahertz scope. And if you hack it, you can get up to 100 megahertz. Well, you can get even beyond 100 megahertz. But I, the hack I used is just the basic hack. It gives you 100 megahertz. And also, it doubles your memory. So this has a 25 million point memory. And if you apply the hack, then it doubles that to 50 million points, which means you can uh, stop the acquisition and zoom and zoom and zoom and keep on zooming. And you'll see uh, a lot of detail in the waveform uh, that you just measured. So uh, Rigel is aware of that. And basically, the reason they're not trying to put a stop to it is because they realize that not everybody's going to be doing that. And the people who are going to do that are having fun with the scopes. And that's also what endears them uh, to the Rigel brand. And it really does make it quite fun. It's kind of like going back to the Apple II with, with Steve Wozniak and all of the slots that he gave you compared to the Mac, which didn't give you any originally, right? And so it just, it, it kind of endears the user to the product. This is the 12-bit scope, by the way, not 8-bit. And uh, many scopes are 8-bit. So it's got some really advanced modern technology. It's even got an Android operating system. And I'm an iOS guy. You know, I, I'm not an, an Android fan necessarily, but it's just saying that it has a very standard touchscreen interface that's quite stable and also it, it helped to <laughs> enable uh, the hacks uh, that you can use uh, to make it even greater. But, um, you know, I purchase things with some of the PayPal donations that are sent to this channel in order to buy things that uh, will help me out to uh, show something new on this channel uh, or present something that I have not shown before. I even purchased a, a new Mac, vintage Mac recently uh, from a gentleman by the name of Michael Mullet who's based in the United States, I purchased, uh, well, I'll just let the cat out of the bag. I don't have the Mac yet, but I purchased a Macintosh Portable. It's been long in coming. It's a backlit, one of the rare types, 5126. And I thought about recapping it myself because all Macintosh Portables need to be recapped. But I decided to use Thomas Andrews, Amiga of Rochester, uh, to do that job. And not only that, but he's also going to recap the AC adapter as well. Uh, because it has electrolytic capacitors inside. And uh, my friend Michael Mullet, he wasn't able to open it because it's just, you know, the AC adapter is glued together. 
and uh, he tried a C clamp and all manner of things and, and I found online it's possible to open them if you have a vise and a couple sacrificial pencils and so I uh, I purchased this uh, cheap old vise off Amazon and had it sent to him uh, since he's the owner of the portable right and he sold it to me and uh, well he was able to open it and so he sent that and a few of the other parts that need recapping over to Thomas Andrews and Thomas is going to get started on that. I decided, you know, I'm not going to do a video on recapping it because Bruce Rain and Brankus Creations has multiple videos about re recapping a portable. You'll find other people who've done it. And what could I really add to that, right? But I can show the actual working portable because it has some pretty fabulous upgrades. And besides, the 5126 is pretty rare anyway. Uh, it's a nifty, nifty machine to have. So that's just one of the things that uh, I've purchased to show on my channel. And uh, of course, your contributions for those of you who have supported this channel. Uh, I always put your names in the ending credits. I wish to thank those of you who have supported this channel. I don't just, uh, you know, hoard the money and not use it at all. I want to advance this channel and come out with some great content for you. And as I mentioned at the end of my last video, I will also be showing the Apple IIc once again. Uh, still, some of the upgrades that I've ordered have not arrived yet, but they eventually will, and I'll be doing another video about that. Uh, I should actually probably do a video about the creating of <laughs> a JDW video because I'm not a full-time YouTuber and um, there's just so much that goes into the making of the video. Uh, what I do is I film after hours at the office. I'm allowed to do that when everybody goes home. Uh, it's much more quiet there than it, here, than it is here at home. Uh, here at home it's very noisy and even though I'm going to later put this into Final Cut Pro and use an AI uh, voice filter to kind of filter out most of the noise, you'll still be able to hear some of the car traffic noise outside because it's just the road is just right there and uh, you, you can, it's pretty loud actually, before the filtering it is anyway. And it's pretty annoying. But at the office it's much more quiet and I also do it in the evening, less traffic too. And it's just easier for me to do. Um, right now I'm only using light that's sunlight and the sun's going down fast so I better hurry up and end this video. But uh, normally at the office I've got these fluorescent tube lighting, you know, normal office lighting. And I'll use maybe a, a felt sheet that's white in front of me. I'll have my black felt sheet behind me which is just put on a blackboard by magnets. And I could do a whole video about the making of that. But uh, I don't have a dedicated room. I don't have a basement, you know, like Adrian does, Adrian's digital basement. I don't have anything like that. So that's why I use a black backdrop. It's also nice because if you have a black background, you can put text over it. And, and there's a lot of content that sometimes I'll add, I'll add to a video uh, that if you have a black background, it makes it nice. And also I like to focus the inten attention either on me or what I'm showing. And so having a black background also is nice to do that. But I just don't have a beautiful place with a rows and rows of Macs or a beautiful uh, place here at home that's dedicated for YouTubing uh, to do that. And so it takes me usually 20 minutes to set up and uh, then I'll have to, you know, set up everything, film for a little while. I'll usually only have a couple hours after work each night to film. And then it takes me another 20 minutes to tear it all down. And then, you know, go to work the next day and after work, you know, set it up 20 minutes, do your filming for a little while, take another 20 minutes to set it, to tear it down. It's just a lot of work, especially the editing. The editing, I, I only have the single camera, so I'll do a lot of zoom shots, swapping out the lenses, um, a lot, I mean, hours upon hours upon hours uh, goes into the making of the videos. But for today's video, I just said, you know what, today I, I'm going to make a video and I'm going to release it the same day. And the way I'm going to do that is just not, you know, I'm not going to, I'm just going to set my camera and turn it on. And this isn't scripted either. Normally I'll write out a script so that I, I will be sure not to leave anything out. <laughs> but for this video, I just said it's going to be a talking head video and I'm just going to talk until I have nothing else to say and then end the video. But I just wanted to make a video today here on New Year's Day to uh, thank you and, and ask for your help uh, in the comment section below. Let, you, let me know uh, what you thought of my content in, in the year 2023. If you were a new subscriber or new to my channel in the year, what, what really uh, brought you to my channel in the first place, I'd love to know. Uh, because I don't always get that feedback. And um, again, I, I look at analytics and I, I know what the numbers are. A lot of people will see, will watch my videos that aren't necessarily about Apple, but Apple is my passion. I, I, I love upgrades. I love the recapping. I love to help those of you who have uh, problems in that area out. And I want to help you as if you were helping me. You know, uh, I want to give you the same type of help that I would want. And so, 
I would like to know what brought you to my channel and uh, what are the goods and bad? Uh, what, what are or the turnoffs? I mean, uh, some, somebody is always giving me a thumbs down. I, it could be the same person. I don't know. It doesn't upset me. In fact, thank you, <laughs> because even the thumbs down uh, helps a channel. It's, it's considered uh, interaction by YouTube. So thumbs downs uh, work. And you don't get to see that. You know, it only shows you the thumbs ups now, but uh, yeah, thumbs downs are, uh, you know, just as beneficial as the thumbs ups in terms of uh, showing YouTube that your channel has interactivity and, you know, you, things are going on just like in the comments section. But uh, I'm, I'm not your typical YouTuber. A lot of times YouTubers will say, let me know down in the comments what you think. And then they never reply. <laughs> All they do is want you to comment down below because that's considered to be interactions going on and it boosts up their channel a bit. And, and then YouTube is more inclined uh, to recommend uh, the... We're having an earthquake now. It's not moving a lot, not yet, but, uh-oh, it's starting to move a lot. Wow. This is kind of a, it's getting a little bit stronger. It's getting stronger. It's settling down a little bit it's still moving we're not at the epicenter obviously but wow this is japan wow that stopped <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll have to check uh, after this video is over what happened and where it was it says here emergency alert uh, on my iphone Strong shaking is expected soon. Stay calm and seek shelter nearby. Hmm. Stay calm and seek shelter nearby. I also see the sun going down, so I should boost up the ISO on my camera here. So it, uh, well, you can actually see me. I didn't realize that until now. I'm only using sunlight. Uh, to record this, so let me see if I can boost it up a bit. There we go. Might be easier to see me now. But yeah, we just had... <laughs> That's a nice thing about filming, right? You you can catch some things. I had an earthquake during the time I was making. And I kind of lost my train of thought. <laughs> but uh, uh, anyway, I, as I was saying, um, I'm not a full-time YouTuber. I'm not analytics-driven, even though I know the numbers. Uh, my passion does lie in a certain area. And uh, I'd love to hear your feedback, though. And I don't just say, like the other YouTubers, let me know your comments down below and they never reply. I hate that. M maybe you do too, right? I've commented, usually it's the bigger YouTubers that do this. Um, they want to hear your comments and then you comment and you're asking them a question and they never reply. Never reply. Now, now that's not everybody. I mean, sometimes I'll get a reply, but it's it's usually rare. And so what I try to do is... Uh, whenever I get an email notification about a reply under any of my videos, whether it be new or a video maybe from seven years ago, uh, if it requires a reply, I'm going to reply. And most of the time I do. And even if it doesn't require a reply, I'll leave a heart mark because only I can apply a heart mark. And that lets the, the person who commented know that I read it and I appreciate the feedback. And so when I ask, please leave your comments down below. I'm not saying it as a normal YouTuber would say it because I actually plan to reply back uh, if you're asking a question. And some of you actually ask me a question in a private email. If you go to my main YouTube channel page, you just click on JDW and then click the About tab and scroll down. There's a why it says Business Inquiries. That's a way to contact me by email. Now, if you have a question that could benefit others, it's probably best if you uh, put that in the public content uh, public comment section under a particular video because uh, my reply could help you and other people too. But you're free to uh, send me an email privately if you'd like. Uh, you could send, you know, put post public con comments and then also ask me a question by email if you'd like. You have the freedom to do that. Uh, but uh, I really try to reply to every one of you. And I'm still a small enough channel to where I can do that. And that's just because 
I really don't like to be ignored. I don't like it when people ignore me and, and, and never answer the question. Even though they say, please put your questions down below. And then if they never answer, what, what's the point, you know? And so in my channel, I want to make sure that there is a point. And so having your feedback to know what you thought about 2023, my videos over the past 12 months, uh, I find it very useful to know what uh, you thought, both the good and the bad, and uh, what you'd like to see this year in 2024. Now, again, even though I get more views on my non-Apple content, Apple is really my passion, and I hope to be doing more Apple II content as well. Uh, again, I'd like to thank Mark Josaitis, Jonathan Adar, and uh, uh, Javier Rivera. There are other people I wish to thank too, but you know, those are the, the main three who really answered a lot of my questions and sent me the Apple II and, and some pretty amazing things to go with it. And that uh, fancy little LCD, right, which I, which I still have. Uh, I also got a VGA adapter. Uh, so Jonathan Adar was saying, oh, so you're not going to show the LCD anymore? He's kind of making a joke there. But no, I, I do. I will plan to, to show this again. This is really an amazing prototype LCD. Uh, but yeah, there are more upgrades that I do intend to, intend to show uh, about the Apple II. But I'm still very much new to the Apple II. But if you're interested in seeing more Apple II content, please let me know. I don't know what percentage of you necessarily are Mac people or Apple II people, but I do know that the rivalry, the old rivalry from back in the early 80s is still existent. I mean, I've not been trolled by too many people on the uh, Apple II Facebook groups. Most everybody has been great to me, just maybe one or two people who have given me the frowny faces or been sassy with me, but that's okay. Uh, not everybody's gonna agree on all things, right? And, uh, you know, some people uh, in the Apple II community consider Mac users to be snobs. And one guy recently said that. <laughs> and I said, wow, that, that, that old rivalry didn't die. <laughs> uh, and I guess that some in the Apple II community, after, you know, the Apple II, Apple stopped selling it, instead of going to the Mac, they went to the Windows, you know, maybe the IBM world and a PC world instead of the Mac. Um, and that's okay. I mean, I, I don't, I don't. I don't try to be a snob on a particular platform, but I must say that I started out with the Mac in 1984 when I was 13, and I've I've always used Macs, and I've never gone to PCs, and I really didn't use Apple IIs until recently. But uh, again, going back to the comments, I love to hear your feedback on um, what what were the videos of 2023 that you really liked and were were helpful to you, and what would you like to see this year in uh, 2024, and. Uh, how do you think uh, I could improve my channel to, to benefit you even better? And again, keeping in mind, I'm not a full-time YouTuber, so I don't have as much flexibility necessarily as uh, some of the other YouTubers do, but I do try to stay mindful of what you folks like and dislike, and uh, I learn a lot from you uh, down in the comments. I also enjoy interacting with you on Facebook groups, Vintage Apple Macintosh Enthusiasts especially, also the Apple II enthusiast group, and then of course Tinker Different, which I'm one of the founders there. I helped to found that, that forum. Um, but uh, you can interact with me on a lot of places outside YouTube as well. But I don't want you to think, oh, this guy, he's just a stuck up YouTuber. I, I really don't, maybe I am a little bit stuck up, I don't know. <laughs> but I just make videos about things that I'm passionate about. And uh, I, I'm really a, a, a vintage computing enthusiast at heart, who just happens to make videos every now and then. And that's pretty much it. But uh, I do like to hear your thoughts. And that's why I keep repeating the refrain that I'd love to hear uh, what you think down in the comment section below. And I wish to once again, thank all of you uh, for supporting my channel, especially in 2023. And I hope to put, produce some really great content for you this year in 2024. So once again, folks, I wish all of you a truly happy new year in 2024. Take care.